I am Dr. Shashi Kumar Menon. Since March 2020, we have been fighting to contain the pandemic of COVID-19 caused by the novel coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2. There are a lot of information available on the internet about coronavirus and a lot of information is being circulated through the social media about COVID-19. I am going to share with you what science has learned about the virus and how science is planning to meet the challenge posed by COVID-19. This presentation is also meant for the non-biologist. So I have taken few liberties with the usage of technical terms to make the understanding better. I request all of you to please use the earphones for better audio quality. So let's begin. Coronaviruses are known to cause severe respiratory, intestinal and general body infections in humans and many animals like cattle, pigs, horses, cats, dogs, bats, civets, rabbits, snakes, many other mammals and birds. Human coronavirus was first identified in 1960 when respiratory infections were seen in adults and children. Coronaviruses became very important clinically in 2002-2003 when the severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS appeared in China. SARS caused by SARS coronavirus infected about 8,000 people of which 774 died. The virus origin was traced to Himalayan palm civets kept in cages in a live animal market in China. But in 2005, SARS coronavirus was traced to wild horseshoe bats in Hong Kong. Now these bats are considered to be the natural reservoir for SARS coronavirus. In 2012, another coronavirus was associated with the Middle East respiratory syndrome called the MERS coronavirus. 2,521 people got infected and 919 died. The virus transmitted to human from camels but the natural reservoir was bats. Coronaviruses belong to a group of viruses which enclose RNA as their genetic information. In fact, the coded information on their RNA is in a ready form to be used once the viruses enter the host. They are very small and about 10 crores of virus particles can fit on a pin head, but they enclose maximum RNA information in them amongst all the RNA viruses. The name Corona comes from the spikes they have on their surface, which is a protein that helps them to attach to the surface of the host cell. They have an outer cover of membrane protein, which also carries an enzyme, esterase, that helps the spike protein to attach better on the host cell surface. As I said earlier, the natural reservoir of SARS coronavirus is a horseshoe bats. In studies related to SARS and MERS, it has been found out that the virus got transmitted to human through another intermediate host. SARS coronavirus was transmitted to human through civet, while MERS coronavirus was transmitted through the camel. Recent investigations indicate that the novel coronavirus of COVID-19 was transmitted to human through the intermediate host of pangolin or the scaly anteater. We know that the proteins are synthesized in cells by attaching amino acids in a specific sequence. The sequence of amino acids is based on the genetic information carried either on RNA or DNA of the cell. So if we can compare the amino acid sequence in a protein in different species, we could possibly trace the evolutionary lineage of the protein. Scientists have Therefore, compared the spike protein in coronaviruses found in different animals and different viral diseases. It's now known that the coronavirus of SARS, MERS are similar and they all evolved from the bat coronavirus. The novel coronavirus of COVID-19 has more number of amino acids in the spike protein as compared to that in the coronavirus of bats. It is speculated that the more number of amino acids in spike protein probably is the reason why the novel coronavirus is able to infect human more efficiently. Molecular studies on the RNA of novel coronavirus and comparing it with those with that of different coronavirus also suggests the origin of novel coronavirus from the bat coronavirus. Scientists have done molecular studies on the whole genetic information of novel coronavirus of COVID-19 and compared it with that of coronavirus from bat and pangolin. 
the similarity of covid-19 coronavirus to pangolin coronavirus and bat coronavirus is very striking in fact the nucleotide identity on the rna of novel coronavirus is about 90% when compared to the pangolin coronavirus to evaluate the possibility of transmission of novel coronavirus from animals to human we need to also look at the wildlife trade in china china has a very prolific wild animal farming and market which is estimated to be making about 18 billion dollars a year employing about 6.5 million people to support this industry the chinese government enacted the wildlife protection law in 1989 which was amended in 2018 allowing farming and trading of wild animals including endangered species with government permits this industry caters to the growing demands of exotic animal food by the affluent chinese population there are several live animal markets that sell various wild species including snakes and pangolins there are farms that breed tigers and bears these markets also sell bats and civet cats mixed species stacked in cages one above the other is very common sight in such markets which allows easy transmission of viruses from one species to the other by contact urine and feces finally the close proximity of human with these animals is an obvious invitation for animal viruses to transmit to human the sars outbreak of 2002 has been linked to such markets where caged civets were found to be infected with bat coronavirus but the civet cats in breeding farms were not infected covid-19 is also believed to have infected the first human in such a market where bats and pangolins were kept together after the sars outbreak in 2002 the chinese government banned the wildlife trade but lifted it after few years now after the covid-19 outbreak again the wildlife trade has been banned there is a growing demand to make this ban a permanent one there are claims made that the virus probably also escaped from a virology research center but evidence is available as of today supports the zoonosis theory that is transmission from animals to human historically speaking world has experienced pandemics before and some of them have caused many deaths if we compare earlier pandemics with current covid-19 then we find that the life threatening factor in covid-19 is comparatively less with about 3 and a half percent deaths among those infected then why are we worried about covid-19 during the outbreaks of sars mers and ebola earlier there were no lockdowns then why today in the fight against covid-19 more than half of the world population is locked down in their homes if you look at this chart it is very clear that compared to sars mers bird flu spanish flu and ebola covid-19 is not that deadly but it gets transmitted from one person to the other fast unlike sars mers and ebola covid-19 gets transmitted even before a patient starts showing symptoms of the disease sars and mers transmitted from one person to the other through physical contact and it was people who were in close contact with patient like the family members and health workers who were in more danger of being infected ebola transmitted on the contact of body fluids of the patient covid-19 however transmits much faster by just being in close proximity of an infected person without actually being in physical contact so social distancing avoiding gatherings and maintaining personal hygiene of hands become so important in preventing covid-19 by evaluating the covid-19 incidences in countries especially in china it has been learned that out of the total infected individuals majority of them come out of the disease with mild symptoms while 20% of them require hospitalization because of severe symptoms like difficulty in breathing these 20% patients need to be cared by medical professionals it is also seen that a quarter of such hospitalized individuals would progress to critical stage needing special icu care and ventilator support health managers across the world are worried about these 20% cases because of challenges of meeting the hospitalization requirements of these people especially the 5% needing icu and ventilators a city with 10000 cases would need at least 500 icu and ventilators this need will dramatically increase 
is there are comorbid patients like persons with diabetes and heart ailments how to arrange these many medical setups when there are other non covid critical patients who also need to be looked after for a country like india this poses an enormous challenge with a majority of population living in semi urban and rural areas with inadequate medical facilities this is why lockdown and social distancing are such a priority strategies for controlling the spread of covid-19 let us now look at the mechanism by which the coronavirus infects the cell coronaviruses are known to attach to the cell surface at the receptors of angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ace2 receptors we will look at ace2 receptors in detail in the next slide once they attach to the ace2 receptors the virus particles are taken into the cell and carried inside once inside the cell the virus starts its action the virus releases its genetic information that is the single stranded rna which is ready to be copied now the virus uses all the available resources and energy of the cell to make all the necessary proteins like the spike protein envelope protein membrane protein nucleocapsid protein etc these proteins have to be put together to form virus particles for assembling these proteins the virus uses endoplasmic reticulum and golgi bodies of the cell itself the new virus particles thus assembled are then released outside the cell to infect other cells what is the role of ace2 receptors in covid-19 infection our kidneys as we know are also involved in maintaining the blood pressure this is because kidneys need proper pressure of blood and blood volume in the body to carry out the filtration process both liver and kidneys function together in maintaining the blood pressure the liver secretes a protein called angiotensinogen which circulates in our blood as an inactive molecule whenever the blood pressure falls the kidney secrete another protein called renin which converts angiotensinogen into a partially active angiotensin 1 this less active angiotensin 1 circulates in blood and reaches the lung where it comes in contact with two other enzymes the angiotensin converting enzyme 1 and angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ace1 or ace2 both these enzymes convert angiotensin 1 to the fully active angiotensin 2 ace1 is more powerful than ace2 in this conversion angiotensin 2 increases the blood pressure by constricting the blood vessels so the bp is raised when coronaviruses enter our body they attach to the ace2 receptors on the surface of the type 2 cells in the lungs the attachment of viruses to ace2 receptors reduces the action of ace2 enzyme this causes an increase in ace1 enzyme activity due to this increased ace1 activity which is more efficient also an excess of angiotensin 2 is produced the excess amount of angiotensin 2 produced attaches to the angiotensin 2 receptor 1a this not only increases the blood pressure but also increases the permeability of alveoli alveoli are tiny air sacs of the lungs where the exchange of oxygen happens with the blood the increase angiotensin 2 causes the alveoli to become more permeable and allows more fluids to flow out from the blood into the lungs this excess fluid starts filling the lungs and accumulates at the lower portion of the lung by gravity this causes the lung to lose its capacity to expand properly making normal breathing very difficult this leads to respiratory distress ace2 normally is also involved in the lung repair and recovery but since the ace2 activity has been reduced due to the infection by coronavirus the lung is unable to repair therefore the situation progresses into more severe respiratory distress the situation is further worsened due to the increased activity of white blood cells which respond to the attack by the virus by releasing several chemicals that cause inflammatory responses the accumulated dead cells and cell debris are cleaned and taken away by the blood to be disposed of but with increased cell debris accumulating the kidneys get clogged leading to kidney failure and this leads to failure of other organs 
the situation gets more complicated leading to multiple organ failure and death our body is equipped to fight the virus with the immune response that our body can provide due to this when the virus enters a cell and releases its genetic material the rna is destroyed by the release of antiviral chemicals the viral nucleocapsid protein on the other hand protects the viral rna from this destruction the attacked cell also releases antiviral chemicals called cytokines like interferon and interleukins the interferon triggers the neighboring healthy cells and makes them release antiviral chemicals in preparation of the imminent viral attack additionally the attacked cell also secretes chemical signals called chemokines these chemokines guide the white blood cells to reach the site of viral attack the virus on the other hand secretes proteins called 3b 6 and membrane proteins m which block the production of interferons interleukins and chemokines thus the prevention of virus attack depends on how strong is the immune response cytokines and chemokines together prevent the spread of virus infection when the virus itself counters the immune response to augment the success of immune response over the virus drugs are prescribed which either complements the immune reaction or prevent the action of virus proteins or directly kill the virus people with diabetes and heart ailments are usually prescribed drugs which are ace inhibitors like perindropril and captopril or angiotensin receptor blockers like losartan and telmisartan such people generally have been found to have more ace receptors and so they will have higher risk of attack from coronaviruses though these patients need not stop these drugs such people need special monitoring and special care if they are infected with coronavirus covid-19 has been transmitted to human by zoonosis at least the current scientific studies support that whether the virus was accidentally released from a lab is still not clear the fatality of covid-19 is because of the cytokine storm which is triggered by the severe immune response of the body this severity is encountered only in 5% of the infected individuals who progress to the critical stage now let us see how the virus is transmitted from one person to another available evidences suggest that covid-19 virus is primarily transmitted between people through respiratory droplets and by contact respiratory droplets are droplet produced when someone sneezes and coughs these droplets range in size from 5 to 10 microns that's about 10 times smaller than the diameter of our hair these droplets don't remain suspended in the air for long but settles down smaller aerosol sizes of coronaviruses have been reported but they were all been demonstrated in controlled laboratory conditions and so they can very rarely take place in natural surroundings so if a person is within 1 meter distance of an infected person then there is a risk of getting the droplets into the nasal pathway mouth or eyes the droplets after settling down contaminates nearby surfaces such contaminated surfaces or fomites harbor viruses which remain active the viruses may remain active on fomites for few hours to few days depending on the nature of the surface and the environmental conditions coming in contact with such contaminated surface can transfer the virus particle to the clothes or to the hands The coronavirus has an outer membrane that hold together the viral assemblage. This outer membrane is oily or made up of lipids and therefore they are very sticky helping the virus to attach to the skin and other surfaces very easily. This picture conceptualizes the mode of transmission of novel coronavirus. The virus particles accumulate in the lungs and upper respiratory tract of the infected person marked as A. the droplets of viral particles are expelled from the body through activities such as coughing sneezing talking and even vomiting 
marked as B. These expelled droplet particles can spread to nearby surroundings and individuals. Viral particles are often found on the hands of the infected person, shown as C, and can spread to commonly touched items such as computers, glasses, faucets, and countertops, marked as D. So the best way to prevent transmission of COVID-19 is to wear a mask, maintain a minimum distance of 3 to 4 feet from other people, cover mouth while sneezing and coughing, avoid touching surfaces that could have been contaminated, and maintain good hygiene of hands by washing well with soap and water. Soap, unlike plain water, has surfactants, and by producing lather, Soap can break the outer lipid membrane of the virus particle and break down the viral assemblage making the virus inactive. It is same as we use soap to wash oily utensils. So frequent washing of hands thoroughly with soap and water is a good preventive measure for COVID-19. Coronaviruses enters our body mainly through the nasal pathway. The ACE receptors along the airway guides the virus into the lungs as the infection progresses. Though the progression of the disease differs in people, generally the first two days are asymptomatic and the patient can be managed with symptomatic treatment with analgesics like paracetamol. As a precaution, however, antibiotics like doxycycline and azithromycin may be prescribed. Recently, Hydroxychloroquine has also been added since this anti-malarial drug has been reported to stop the release of RNA by the virus after it enters the cell. In the next few days of infection, the virus slowly migrates into the upper respiratory tracts. At this stage, clinical symptoms are manifested and the body responds with very active immune reactions. Initial treatment with antivirals may be started at this stage. 20% of the patients reach the next stage when the virus starts infecting the air exchange units of the lungs, the alveoli cell type 2. Such patients will need hospitalization and there is a risk that the infection will progress further and the patient may become critical. At this stage, a combination of antivirals are prescribed including adjuvant therapies like convalescent plasma therapy and injectable immunomodulators. This is just a general outline of the treatment strategy for COVID-19 and the actual treatment will depend on the clinical status of the patient. Currently, there are no specific drugs against COVID-19. The patients are treated on the basis of experiences of medical teams who had treated patients of COVID-19 in China. The most prevalent treatment involves the use of antivirals, especially those which are used against HIV, SARS, and MERS. Remdesivir, which was developed to treat Ebola, is now being tested as a possible alternative. Hydroxychloroquine, the anti-malaria drug, has been found to prevent the release of RNA by the virus when it enters the cell. Ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug, which has also been found to stop replication of coronavirus in laboratory studies. Vaccines are our best bet. But their development needs careful evaluation of their safety, especially their potential of causing life-threatening immune reactions. This will take some time. With international cooperation and with proactive support from drug regulators, this development time is being reduced by conducting research, preclinical testing, patient trials and developing mass production methods parallelly. Still, it will take few months before we get an effective vaccine. Vaccines are being designed against different viral targets and also targets to block the life cycle mechanism of the virus. A more logical approach has been suggested which was used during the SARS outbreak earlier. This involves collecting plasma from COVID recovered patients and injecting small volumes of this plasma into current patients. This would provide the recipients with antibodies from the donor patient. This therapy has its own risk, like possibility of passing some virus particle into the recipient patient. Additionally, the plasma injected may not necessarily elucidate a positive response from the recipient patient. 
Another strategy suggested is to infuse soluble ACE receptor proteins to circulate in the blood which will in a way fool the virus to attach onto the circulating proteins rather than those on the cell surface. Interestingly, women have been found to tolerate the attack of virus better than men. This has triggered a possible strategy of injecting small doses of female hormone in male patients to boost their immunity. It will definitely take a while, probably two or three months before science provides us with a potentially effective treatment for COVID-19. Till then, social distancing and good personal hygiene, especially of hands, will be the best way to keep novel coronavirus at bay. Looking forward, three main scenarios can possibly emerge. One is that the virus continues to infect more people till it finds not enough people to infect. This would mean that more than 60% of the population will have to be infected and be immune to the virus. Before this herd immunity comes into effect, many more people will lose their lives. The second scenario will be that the virus itself mutates into a less virulent form. This however cannot be assured with any certain time frame. The third scenario is the development of an effective vaccine which will protect us against the virus infection and its transmission. This is a more hopeful scenario which could be attained in the coming months. One thing we must appreciate, the pandemic of COVID-19 is being managed better globally as compared to SARS of 2002. This is mainly because of advanced connectivity, more efficient information sharing and monitoring. We need to understand one thing. The way forward will be decided 50% by the social and political decisions that we make, while 50% will be provided by science. So let us play our roles responsibly and diligently follow the guidelines and directives of the government agencies. This is the horseshoe bat, the natural reservoir of coronaviruses. Bats have been there on this planet for thousands of years, but today many of us may see them as a threat. The insectivorous bats, like this horseshoe bat, feed exclusively on insects, many of which are harmful to our agricultural produce, while the fruit bats help us by pollinating many of our fruit trees. Today, Due to human greed and encroachment of natural habitats, we have come in close proximity of these species, even killing and eating them. The big question is then, can we blame bats for coronavirus or COVID-19? No, surely not. It is our lifestyle and attitude to nature and natural laws that need to change. This crisis will pass. What we learned from it and how we faced it should shape the way we take our lives forward. That will decide whether we face another crisis or not. Thank you. Thank you for watching.